What is gold content? Gold content is a term that describes the actual amount of gold present in a given material, or alloy, or product. It is a measure of how much of the substance is composed of pure gold, and it can be expressed in different ways depending on the context. In geology and mining, gold content usually refers to the concentration of gold within an ore or rock. This is often measured in grams per ton, g t or parts per million, ppm. For example, an ore sample with a gold content of 5 grams per ton means that, on average, there are 5 grams of gold in every metric ton of rock. Gold deposits are typically classified as low-grade or high-grade based on their gold content, with high-grade ores being more economically valuable because they yield more gold during processing. In metallurgy and jewelry, gold content is expressed in terms of purity or fineness. Pure gold is described as 24 carat, 24K, meaning it contains 99.9% .9 gold. Lower carat values, such as 18K or 14K, indicate that the gold is alloyed with other metals like silver, copper, or nickel to increase strength and durability. For example, 18K gold contains about 75% gold, while 14K gold contains about 58.3% gold. Jewelers often refer to the gold content when determining the value, durability, and color of the piece. In finance and trade, gold content can refer to the actual weight of gold in a coin, bar, or bullion. Historically, many currencies were backed by a fixed gold content, the gold standard, meaning the value of paper money could be exchanged for a certain amount of gold. Even today, the price of gold products is closely tied to their gold content and weight, often measured in troy ounces. Overall, the concept of gold content is essential because it directly influences the economic value, industrial use, and market demand for gold-bearing materials. Whether in mining, jewelry, or finance, knowing the gold content determines how valuable and useful a material really is. How is gold content form? Great question. Let's break it down carefully. When we ask, how is gold content formed, we are really asking how gold becomes concentrated in nature so that rocks, sediments, or ores contain measurable amounts of gold. Gold content is not randomly distributed, it is the result of geological processes that separate, transport, and concentrate this rare metal over millions of years. 1. Primary formation, magmatic and hydrothermal processes. Gold originally comes from the Earth's crust and mantle. During the cooling of magmas deep underground, tiny amounts of gold become concentrated in certain minerals. However, gold rarely stays evenly spread, instead, geological fluids, hot, mineral-rich water known as hydrothermal fluids, play a major role in concentrating it. Hydrothermal veins, superheated water dissolves gold from surrounding rocks and transports it upward through cracks and fractures. As the fluid cools, gold precipitates out and fills quartz veins. This is why many gold deposits are found in quartz-rich veins within granites or volcanic rocks. Sulfide associations, gold often forms in association with sulfide minerals like pyrite, fool's gold, or arsenopyrite. The gold content of these rocks can be microscopic, requiring advanced processing to extract. 2. Secondary formation weathering and sedimentary processes. Once gold is exposed at the Earth's surface, weathering and erosion break down the original host rocks. Gold, being heavy and chemically stable, resists corrosion and remains behind when lighter minerals are washed away. Placer deposits, rivers and streams carry eroded gold particles and concentrate them in riverbeds, sandbars, and ancient gravels. These deposits often have very high gold content because only the dense gold particles remain after lighter materials are swept away. This is why panning for gold works in river sediments. Lateritic concentration, in tropical climates, chemical weathering can strip away soluble elements from rocks, leaving behind resistant minerals like gold. Over long periods, this creates enriched surface layers with elevated gold content. 3. Metamorphic Reconcentration In some regions, rocks are subjected to metamorphism, high pressure and temperature conditions without melting. During this process, 
fluids can remobilize gold from dispersed sources and redeposit it into new structures, further enriching the gold content. This is one reason why ancient mountain belts often host significant gold deposits. 4. Human Understanding of Gold Content Once these natural processes have created a concentration of gold, geologists measure gold content by sampling and analyzing rocks or sediments. This is usually expressed as grams per ton, g slash t, in ores, parts per million, ppm, in soils or sediments. Carat or fineness in refined gold products, e.g., 24K, 18K. Thus, gold content is essentially the result of Earth's geological, sorting system, where natural processes like magmatism, hydrothermal activity, weathering, erosion, and metamorphism concentrate gold from a very low background abundance into economic deposits. In summary, gold content is formed through deep earth magmatic activity, hydrothermal mineralizing fluids, surface weathering and erosion, sedimentary concentration, and metamorphic reworking. These processes transform scattered atoms of gold into rich deposits that humans can later discover, mine, and refine. Geologic Importance of Gold Content That's an excellent question. The geologic importance of gold content is very broad, because gold is not only a valuable metal but also a geologic tracer that reveals important information about Earth's processes, or forming environments, and economic resources. Let me explain in depth. 1. Indicator of or Deposits The gold content of rocks, soils, and sediments is one of the most important criteria for identifying or deposits. Gold is widely dispersed in the Earth's crust, Average crustal abundance is about 1 to 4 parts per billion, but only in certain geological settings does it become concentrated enough to form a deposit worth mining. High gold content in a rock sample suggests proximity to a hydrothermal system, mineralized vein, or a placer deposit. Low but anomalous gold content in soils or sediments can still guide exploration geologists to hidden or bodies below the surface. Thus, gold content acts as a pathfinder in mineral exploration. 2. Evidence of hydrothermal and magmatic activity. Gold does not usually crystallize alone. It is commonly associated with quartz veins, sulfides, pyrite, chalcopyrite, arsenopyrite, and alteration halos. The gold content of these rocks reflects the strength and chemistry of hydrothermal systems. In porphyry and epithermal deposits, variations in gold content show how fluid circulated and deposited metals. Gold content is used to distinguish between different ore types. Low sulfidation epithermal systems often have higher native gold content. High sulfidation systems may show dispersed gold in sulfides. In this way, gold content helps reconstruct the geologic history of mineralizing events. 3. Placer geology and sediment transport. The gold content of sediments and gravels has enormous geologic importance for understanding erosion, transport, and deposition. Placer deposits with high gold content indicate strong natural sorting processes, where dense gold particles were concentrated in river channels or ancient streambeds. The distribution of gold flakes and nuggets can tell geologists about the paleogeography of rivers, sedimentary basins, and ancient landscapes. This is why studying gold content is not just about economic value, but also about understanding past environments. 4. Metamorphic and Structural Controls In many ancient mountain belts, gold deposits are structurally controlled. The gold content of shear zones, fault lines, and metamorphic rocks helps geologists trace the role of deformation and metamorphism in concentrating metals. For example, greenstone belts in Archean Cratons, e.g., in Canada, Australia, South Africa, are famous for their high gold content. Their study provides insights into early earth tectonics and crustal evolution. Thus, gold content is a key marker for studying ancient geologic processes that shaped Earth's continents. 5. Economic Geology and Resource Evaluation The economic viability of a mine depends almost entirely on gold content. An ore with 1 to 2 grams per ton gold content might be economic if mined on a large scale, 
low-grade, bulk mining. Ores with 10 to 30 grams per ton gold content are considered high-grade and very profitable. Therefore, geologists calculate gold content to classify deposits, design mines, and estimate the lifespan of operations. It is both a geologic and economic parameter. 6. Geochemical Tracer in Exploration Gold content is often measured alongside pathfinder elements such as arsenic, antimony, mercury, tellurium, or bismuth. These geochemical signatures reveal the type of deposit and help narrow down exploration targets. Even very low levels of gold content, in parts per billion, can guide companies toward major discoveries. Summary The geologic importance of gold content lies in Identifying or deposits and guiding exploration Revealing hydrothermal, magmatic, sedimentary, and metamorphic processes Understanding erosion and sediment transport through placer deposits Acting as a tracer for structural geology and ancient tectonics Determining the economic value of mineral resources Serving as a geochemical indicator in exploration programs In short, gold content is not only about how much gold is present, but also a window into the Earth's geological history and processes, making it central to both science and industry.